Another analytical technique is called mesh current analysis. Here the mesh currents are analysis variables that are useful in circuits containing many elements connected in series. So here is a mesh current. All right. And just to review the terminology, when we drew the mesh current, a loop is a closed path formed by passing through an ordered sequence of nodes without passing through any node more than once. So here's a loop. So that's a loop here. That's our corresponding mesh current. And that's a loop. And a loop. And a loop. Now a mesh is a special type of loop that does not enclose any elements. And here we did not enclose any of the elements here. An example of enclosing an element, which is therefore not a mesh current, is this loop here. Because we are enclosing this element. When we choose a reference direction, usually we choose it in the clockwise direction. So we need to be consistent when we do the mesh analysis. Again, the mesh currents are the circuit variables that are unknown. And then once we find these unknowns, the mesh currents, let's say this is, we'll call this mesh current IA, IB, and IC, ID, IE, and IF. Once we find these unknowns, that completely describes this circuit. Let's take this element here. Okay, here's our reference direction. For ID, we see it going this way, and for IE, we see it going that way. Therefore, the current through this element, we'll call it X, the current through element X is basically ID minus IX. Here we note that reference direction here for IX agrees with the direction of ID. Okay, let's do the following example that uses mesh current analysis. So we're given this planar circuit here. We have three loops, mesh currents, and it does not enclose any elements. We're given IA as 10 amps, IB as 5 amps, and IC as negative 3 amps. And in this problem we want to find currents I1 through each of these elements. We have six elements. Here's I1 going through this element, I2 going through this element, I3, I4, I5, and I6. And what we want to do is take these element currents and express it in terms of the mesh currents. So let's take a look at I1 first. We see it's going down, but since we choose our reference to be clockwise direction, we see that IA goes against I1. So we have minus IA, and therefore I1 is equal to minus 10 amps. All right, so I1 is equal to minus IA, which is opposite in this reference direction. Now let's look at I2. Well, I2, what's going through I2? Well, we have mesh current IA in one direction, so it's in the same direction, so that's plus IA. And then we have IC going in the opposite direction. So that's minus IC going through element 2. So what we have in terms of the mesh currents, we have 10 minus minus 3, which is equal to 13 amps. So that's the current for I2. Now let's look at I3. It's in the same direction as IA. And it's in the opposite direction of IB. 
So IA is 10, IB is 5, therefore the current through this element 3 has a current of 5 amps. We're going to follow the same process with the rest of the elements, I4. Same direction as IB and opposite direction of IC. So IB is 5 minus minus 3, that's the value of IC, minus 3 is equal to 8 amps. I5 has only IB and is going in the same direction. So I5 is equal to IB, which is equal to 5 amps. And finally, we have I6. The only mesh current going through I6 is IC, which is in the same direction. So I6 is equal to IC, and that's equal to minus 3 amps. So that's how you describe the element currents in terms of the mesh currents that we assigned here for this circuit.